Welcome to Beyond My Crisis. I'm your host, Ron Rosnick. And I'm Vivian Gaspar. And today we have Dr. Maria Schwartz. Most of her art followers know her as Masha. She is the founder and CEO of Masha Schwartz Art and Vivid Connect. Masha is also the creator of Surrey Abstract Art Style and the first Surrey Abstract Artist worldwide. Today we're going to talk about this style and the art as it spurs creativity and improves our problem solving skills. If you're a beginner artist or looking to monetize your artistic hobby and turn it into a business, Masha will share some strategies on how we can get started to be successful. Masha, this art is absolutely beautiful. Could you please explain to us what is Surrey Abstract? Sure. The Surrey Abstract style merges the coexistence of surreal and abstract on the same plane. In this style, the artist questions the clarity and lucidity of the critical paranoia state coined by Salvador Dali, further exploring the dreams and associated realities while adding music, a technique that was developed by Vasily Kandinsky, which really inspires creativity and promotes creative thinking. So what do you mean adding music? Are they listening to music or you are when you're painting? Yes. I actually listen to music to really inspire me. This only works if we listen to music that motivates your creative thinking and taps into your brain power to really take it to the next level while you're using your imagination and your cre creativity. I, yeah, I see on YouTube there's some special sounds like 440 hertz and 40 hertz that's supposed to help cognitive function. Does that have any interplay with this? I believe it does. I find that a lot of different professions actually use music to motivate them to think more creatively. Even in IT, they use music to really problem solve and find new solutions. Yeah, even sounds now. There are, right. cl there are clinical trials going on today down in Florida to improve cognitive function using specific sounds and, and specific kind of frequencies uh, visually. So the critical paranoia state actually <clears throat> makes you go into a, a paranoid state. It's when you enter the paranoid like state. Like we all want to be there, right? Wait, what do you mean by paranoid state? I didn't it, think it's that's a state a good in thing. which, right? It's a state in which you fear that somebody is controlling you or manipulating you. It sounds a little scary, right? But what Dali actually found is that when our brain enters this state, we have the ability to start connecting and interrelating objects and concepts that are non-related in our rational line of thinking. In the Surrey Abstract style, I noticed that when I add music to the mix, it takes our brain to another power and really allows us to create strong connections and conceptualizations, not just for art, but also in the business world for problem solving of really strong and difficult problems. Is that how you got through all your schooling? You are so well educated. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you have a doctorate, so that's impressive. Is this, uh, has music been a tool that utilized to help you with your studies to get to that level? At times, I did use music. What I did find, and I think some of the other studies also find, is that when you listen to music that has words, in it that you understand, not just music with so any words. Not or Italian any opera. Right? <laughs> right. Or intense rap music. <laughs> right. When the music is in a language that you understand, it actually goes against your thinking if you're trying to do writing. But if you listen to music that just produces sounds or just inspires you during your creative process or doing your thinking process, it does trigger your brain to really take your creative thinking to the next level and your critical thinking and develop innovative new ways or breakthrough innovations at wow. the time. Is so, this a good, oh. that, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say, is this a good example of merging and bringing together the right side, left side of the brain concepts we hear so frequently about? I think it is. But even more so, if we have your artwork in our visual place, like if we have it in our home, we're going to be smarter then, right? We're going to think better. We're going to be more productive. 
I think in today's technology world and information age, we no longer need to reproduce portraiture or realistic art as it stands, largely because we can always print it out. There's so many technologies out there today. You know, there's 3D printers, there are cameras that take photographic images, and all of those can reproduce almost photographic or identical to real life. It's no longer interesting, in and, my opinion. And our brain knows that and just doesn't have to reprocess anything. When it sees something abstract or surreal, it, it, I hear it can improve neuroplasticity. It, what I is neuroplasticity? Possible. <laughs> but I, I believe that art today should push our boundaries of understanding and really allow us to look into the future. It's like taking a glimpse into what's possible out there. And I hope to take that concept and really turn it into reality for a lot of my audience and also inspire other artists to do it. But you're also taking this concept and turning it into helping other artists with monetizing and making it more of a business. Is that accurate? Yes. So we need to take a little break because this is very exciting for you. I never encountered someone who's so talented both in business and in art. That's amazing. We're going to take a little break and come right back and learn a lot more how artists can become a little bit more valuable with their art by helping them earn a living with it. Welcome back to Beyond My Crisis. We're here talking to Masha about how you can monetize your art and make it a business you always dreamed of. When I started out making art and developed a passion for it, I was really protective over my art. I felt like it was my baby. I couldn't share it with the world. And I didn't want anybody to mistreat my art. Because it was very per it's a personal thing. It's well, I always feel that we'll buy a piece of art, we'll hang it on our wall, keep it there for a while, then we want to have a change of scenery and replace it. And what ended up in my mind as a big question is like, will somebody just throw away my art? I was terrified of that mm -hmm. idea. And I also felt that my art just wouldn't be as appreciated. I didn't want that happening with my art, so I saved all of my pieces for many, many years. And as my friends and family were telling me, you know, this is amazing, you need to share it with the world, I just kind of reserved myself and said, thank you, but no thank so, you. So, <laughs> so, like so, it's like, yeah. like taking so how, how did you break, that, break through that barrier? Your own, it was really your own mental barrier as to who would appreciate you as an artist. In high school and going into my undergraduate degree, I actually started teaching art classes to younger kids. And Did you show them your own art or you still I did show them okay. some of my own art, but in my art classes I implemented concepts of really springing their and triggering kids creativity and imagination. And I was just shocked to hear that so many kids would tell me, I don't have an imagination. I don't have an imagination. I can't do wow. this. And I thought to myself, how is that possible? My parents always inspired me to be creative, to come up with different ideas and concepts from nothing. And these kids have all the tools that I'm providing to them, and they're telling me they're not creative. And what I learned is that we, as we progress in our school system, mm -hmm. we are taught that we need to take certain concepts and then in the process of our life and career, we add experiences to these pro concepts. And these concepts and experiences together 
build the way that we take the next steps in life and our decision making so, process. So we're kind of forced to live in a framework of our society that the adults and the teachers have been pushing the kids to be within. Correct. And what that does to our brains is it narrows the path in which we think and process creative ideas. So instead of creating opportunities that lead to breakthrough innovations, we actually block ourselves off almost in the box, right? And say, no, we're gonna function with this, these boundaries. The adults and the teachers are not percolating creativity. What, what is the question that parents and, and educators can say to these children to inspire creativity today? I would say that you have to ask kids and young adults, how can we solve this better? What are some of the solutions for these problems? You had mentioned that you had failures and now you brought it to success with your art. How did that manifest? So I started out doing art shows in 2008, 2009, and I thought, well, if I do art shows, I share my art with others, I have a little bit of exposure, it's really going to take my art to the next level. But what I failed to realize, that even though I was helping boost the businesses in the Baltimore and DC areas, and some of the lounges that I did the shows at, I didn't have any flyers to give out to anyone or any marketing material. Business to, cards you had? I did have business cards. Okay. But I didn't have any payment software or anything to process payment requests. And one of the biggest things that I failed to do in these events is ask for a sale. Uh -huh. Oh, you never a ask for times, a sale. No. And, and it sounds simple, right? Yes. It's just it's gonna ask. Sounds, right. Just gonna Hi, ask. would you like to buy my art? Well, but I, I see what's important art? also oh, yeah. is that artists have cards where when you flip it over, there's a price on there too. Do you recommend that? I do not. Mm -hmm. I believe that the pricing has to come from models that compare you to other artists and each work is gonna be different. So, so we have to compete with other artists and price it competitively, yes. you're saying. Yes. How does someone find competitive pricing? How do you compare your own art then? That's a good question. What I like to do, and I only started doing this rather recently in the last couple of years, and I didn't know this from, you have to research other artists that are in your niche and your, that have your style. It is absolutely incredible how many artists actually paint in a style that's similar to yours. Nobody's gonna paint like you, but they'll paint in a style similar to yours. And those artists might already be established, so oftentimes you can price your work similar to their pricing and elevate yourself with their backing. If you know about it, and many artists are just artists, they don't think business. You're a business person who's also an artist, a very good flavor and blend, so you have that astute ability to maybe even help other people figure out how to make their art a business. Right. Right? Because you know, that you know how to connect all these dots. Asking for money, knowing how to price, um, um, comparative research, having marketing <laughs> materials, postcards, all these. There's a lot right. to know to create right. a, a, a business out of this. So what are the most important takeaways that an artist should have when they are ready to branch out into the real world? Ron, the two most important takeaways for artists who are looking to monetize their business are the need for exposure, how much they appear out in front of their audience and connect with the audience, and the second takeaway is you really have to ask for the sale and market yourself. Nobody's gonna come knocking on your door and tell you that they have, they have to or want to buy your art unless you ask for that sale. Oftentimes, artists miss that critical point. They just think that everybody's gonna be infatuated and in love with their art and it's gonna sell, it, sell itself. So we have to learn how to be salespeople as artists. Right. Fantastic. Okay, we'll be right back with more from Masha and how to be an artist and a business person.
any time you can come into court and file for a change if there's a change of circumstances. We give an hour free consult. It's confidential. Find out what has to be done. Welcome back to Beyond My Crisis. We're here with Masha, learning how artists can turn their artwork into their business. Masha, what would you say is the key to your success as a professional artist? Vivian, what I found is that the key to my success as a professional artist has been the understanding that exposure is everything. In your sales, in your audience, and bringing the right fans to your art. But more importantly than that, artists need to start treating their art as a business, uh -huh. which is a mind shift that we have to go through. Because a lot of the creatives don't perceive art as a business. And they think, I'm an artist, and I can't trivialize my, my art with other things like business. It'll take away from my creativity. Correct. But will it take away from their creativity? It doesn't have to. What I found is that when we do commissions for others, there is an element of compromise that we have to achieve. Mm -hmm. And we have to say to ourselves, this piece may not be the perfect ideal that we aspire to achieve with every art. In fact, Salvador Dali put it very eloquently. He said, have no fear of perfection, you'll never reach it. And I'm, I'm a yeah. true believer in that. Ron has a saying around that. I've learned actually. that about, about, about business and life, is like, don't strive for perfection, just excellence. Right, and in my doctoral degree, I think I really hit that, that particular point where I tried to perfect it and perfect it and perfect it, and after so many years, it's only going to be but so perfect. So just start doing it and learn from your mistakes and make sure you're learning from your mistakes. Right. right. <laughs> but you're talking it about is. marketing as well. And when I think of marketing, I think internet marketing, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Snapchat, all TikTok, the social media. <laughs> all the social media and even the young millennial social media that is so popular today. How does an artist break into all of these internet components? There are a few different areas that are find to be very important for an artist to develop as they're starting out. The first important piece is they need to really develop their own style. They need to understand that in order to sell their art, they need to have an online component, whether it's an e-commerce site or another platform online where they're going to process their sales. The second part of that is the artist really has to align themselves with other artists in their niche, which yes. means that any one of us should be able to name 20 to 30 other artists who are part of our niche, and the way that we can price our work is by aligning our pricing with the other artists in our niche. Because what that automatically does for us is it elevates our work to the level of other accomplished artists who are already out there. So join an artistic community that is like-minded for what you want to achieve, your goals, and your type, your style of art. You could certainly do that. There are many online, online communities that are available for artists. Some of them even allow you to post your art on there to promote it. Even and you know you them all, there's so many. Try to sell it on <laughs> yeah. there. There's a ton on Facebook. I also recommend that artists, and, and this is something that I didn't do and I so wish I did. So I'm going to make these recommendations here for all the beginner artists. When you are starting out, this may sound very trivial, but put your name on your work and the name of your work, like the title of your work, on the back of it if you don't want to put it on the front. After developing 300, 400, 500 pieces, you forget some of the names of your works. Trust me. So wait, when you say put your name, do you mean your name, uh, that your name, you know, Masha, or do you mean the piece of A lot of artists works? don't sign their work when they're starting out. Oh. They don't think it's worthy. Okay, so that's ah. mandatory, right? That, that right. should be the ABCs of being an artist. Sounds sign trivial. your work. 
I thought that's obvious. I mean, even, <laughs> even if you're not super proud of it, get into the habit of just signing your work. You will right. always be able to create more work and more work, and later on you can look back and see how much progress you've made. Right. So what's, are we on the first one? What's the second so one? The, the other portion of that is you have to digitize your work. I spent, without exaggeration, a month photographing all of my works and digitizing them to put them on an online platform. I recommend Artmoi, which is A-R-T-M-O-I dot com as the cataloging site that's free. And any artist out there can use it to upload digital images of their art, the name of the work, tags, and a short description about their art so they can always pull it up online and show others what's available or what they have or just have a system for cataloging their pieces. Do you suggest... Uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> Do you suggest putting it by any kind of grouping? Uh, yes. Themes, perhaps? Yes. I found that over the years, I've created such a wide range of different works that others really couldn't connect with them because my styles varied until I started to really hone in on my Suri Abstract style. I did realistic works, I did totally abstract works, I did surreal works, and it was just a mix of different, different types of works. And when I started to organize them, it was not until I put them into series that the audience really started to resonate with them. I see. Say, oh, I can connect with the series. I know what it's about. And when you really define the series as to what it is and how it takes your work to the next level and each piece how it connects to it with a story behind it then your audience starts to connect with it especially for abstract pieces so people look at it they don't know what to think so about that's very it. important create a little story behind your artwork right. but also i know for abstract sometimes it means something different to the viewer it means diff something different to everybody do we want to describe the art piece in too in detail or should we leave it to the observer if you're posting it online for sale, I recommend a description. And I recommend also listing maybe how many pieces are part of the series, or if it's a small series or a large series, or if it's a growing series. Really put that out there so others know, because if it's a series that, let's say, you like... They're going to want to buy the whole series. I used to be a stamp collector, well, and I always like to get the whole series of stamps. Well, either that, or if it's a growing series, you're looking forward to the next piece, so you're always going to check back. Yes. It's a great way to have repetitive sales. On that note, I really applaud all this amazing progress that you made, but we had to have had recognized you started with the dream. We are going to take another break and come back and find out more about where you started this big, beautiful dream that you had. Are you disappointed by your tax returns? By maximizing your tax refund, you can look forward to less stress, more valuable life experiences, more stability. Kendall Ludden, tax preparer and refund strategist. He's here to help. Welcome back to Beyond My Crisis. We're here with Masha talking about art as a business and how we can make what is a dream a really big dream. So um, what, what can you, how can you inspire artists to make this their dream? Ron, I find that using your imagination and creative thinking really takes our conceptualizations of today's world to another level. And it's important to perceive our art as a business as much as a creative skill set. And when we really inspire others to learn from our art and to glean something new in our art, if you think about it, we only live, some of us, for 100 years. And we experience only a short period of, of the world in that lifetime. If we just simply flow through it and go through the motions, we walk away with very little right. and we leave behind very little. But if we can inspire others, if we can teach them something new, have them see something different, then it brings a whole new meaning into today's world. 
So you what, remind me. Yeah. <laughs> what you're reminding me of is describing a legacy. What are you leaving behind to share with others and help improve lo people's lives? You know, it's very interesting that you asked that, Vivian. I've always questioned, why is it that when you die, you get a museum of your art? Why can't you just have a museum while you're alive? And it, that concept never stood we, with me. You know, it's just... The modern world doesn't appreciate living artists just when they're, when right. they're dead. So how so, can we break through? How can a living so artist be appreciated? I want to be, and I'm going to be, the first artist to create a living museum of my art that travels and really creates these live experiences for others through a museum of my works. With Surrey Abstract Style as your primary With focus? With Surrey Abstract Style, VR has enhanced the reality for a lot of artists and the new technology is coming out. I mean, there's so many possibilities, Ron. I really want to be able to open up my museum anywhere I go and have people experience art in a very different fashion and also have individuals come into this museum and have their own experiences of creativity, create their own art, which, you know, is, is totally different. It's not something that's done today. But you're a pioneer in uh, another field of improving cognitive function. We talked about how your art and how this type of art can make people smarter, more aware, be more creative. So yeah. you're doing something that really hasn't been done before with consciousness, I would say. It has been done a little bit with the works of Dali, and actually there's a new artist, her name is Madame Dali, oh. which does very similar things. And mm -hmm. She claims that she's connected to Dali in many ways. Spiritual, and that she sees, She says that she sees him appear in his dreams and that he guides her artwork, which is really cool, in my opinion. But I definitely want people to push the boundaries of their creativity, their imagination, and just look into the future of what's possible. I think yeah. it will create such a better world for everybody in the future. I think that's really an amazing dream to have is to build this kind of legacy and to have it have it carry forward to helping people, especially when it's not just something pleasant to look at as most people perceive art to be, but to spur different connectivities in your brain and to improve their lives with how they interact with your art, I think is, Nothing short of a miraculous, amazing concept. It's a new reason to buy art. Uh, art that helps your cognitive function oh, is, 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 is huge. I mean, people that are suffering from Alzheimer's or cognitive disorders, to just have white walls all around them, that's not going to fire new neurons. We need, we need surrey, surreal art, right? And about, surrey how abstract about art. How on entrepreneurs to their next great thought and so, business? <laughs> so I actually, over the last 10 years, have been working with the Hands On DC organization, which is a nonprofit organization and it helps renovate schools in the DC area. And what I've been doing is working with them to develop murals in DC schools. They would give me a set of volunteers, none of whom know how to paint. Oh. Right. And wow. I would have them paint these amazing murals that inspire our future entrepreneurs. So I'm definitely Wonderful. aligning with you That's on that. That's exactly it. Well, yeah. on that uh, amazing thought is to how to take art and your passion and your humongous big dream and turn it into an amazing legacy that improves other people's lives. We have to say that truly is how you're helping people get beyond their crisis and move forward with their lives. Thank you so much, Masha. This thank has you. been very inspirational. And thank, thank you so you much for watching this episode of Beyond My Crisis with Ron and Vivian. And I hope you get a lot of wonderful insight to help you get beyond your crisis. And smarter, too. <laughs>